After a successful landing on the moon, the Indian Space Research Organization is ready to launch its Aditya L1 mission to study the sun at 11.50 a.m. from the second launch pad at Sriharikota. Now, the 1,480 kg spacecraft will be carried by India's workhorse, the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, and put in a highly elliptical orbit. Joining us for further clarity on the Aditya L1 mission, our in-house expert on all things space, Pallav Bagla. Pallav, sir, by the way, is joining us in studio and he's radiating like the sun himself this <laughs> morning. Pallav, sir, how excited are you? But should we not be excited? Indeed. After moonwalk, a sun dance, or can't, can you ask for anything better? I think India is showing all its technological prowess with a successful moon, soft landing on the moon and now mission to the sun. So earth, moon and sun all within India's embrace. What a wonderful day and the, and the sun rose for all its beauty today. I am thoroughly enjoying myself. Right. Also, for further clarity, to understand the uh, mission's objectives better, we also have Sam Daniel joining us from Sri Harikota this morning. Right. We're told Sam Daniel is going to be joining us in a short while from now. But also on the broadcast with us, uh, radio astronomer Samir Dhurde. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us on the broadcast this morning. Though the sun can be studied through ground-based telescopes as well, as Pallav sir has also explained earlier, it is best observed from space outside of the Earth's atmosphere and magnetic fields. Take us through the objectives of this Aditya L1 mission. So Aditya is special because we have uh, already had solar telescopes and India has several good solar observatories which are on the ground. Uh, however, the sun also gives out a lot of uh, radiation which cannot reach the Earth's surface. This includes uh, high energy radiation like ultraviolet, X-rays, gamma rays, etc. We are of course thankful that it does not reach the Earth because otherwise life would not be possible. But uh, since we need to study the sun in its completeness, we have to observe these. And for that, we have to go to space. So the world has been going to space uh, with different telescopes. And it is now India's turn to go there with its ultraviolet telescope and other arrays of instruments which can study uh, various kinds of uh, other uh, radiation and cosmic rays which cannot reach us here. So uh, this is a great step and uh, it is specially focused uh, on studying the sun uh, as the name suggests. It, of course, the mission name is not just Aditya, it's Aditya L1 because of the unique position that it is going to in space. Right. L1 is a Lagrangian point and uh, it's the first time India would be uh, reaching there. And Pallav sir is going to explain to us why the Aditya 1 mission was changed to Aditya L1. Pallav sir. Well, Aditya L1, as uh, Dr. Samir explained, is because of its unique position. See, this is going to be very unique because till now, India has always sent missions around Moon or Mars where there is an object around which the satellite goes and uh, uh, revolves or rotates. This one is very unique. There is nothing. It's just an abstract space in between where in a halo orbit it will hang around there in a passive way but do continuous observation of the sun. Uh, the beauty of this uh, Indian-made satellite, and Dr. Samir has been part of that journey, is that Indian scientists are going to contribute to understanding solar physics and the solar science. The sun is the harbinger of life. You and I cannot exist without the sun, but we know so little of the sun. We see it every day. Uh, so. In fact, scientists like scientists like Dr. Samir are going to get uh, copious amounts of data, hopefully from Aditya, uh, so that we can resolve many of the mysteries of the sun. And especially, and I'm looking forward to that, that big issue, why the sun gets angry, because when it gets angry, uh, it, it, it fries satellites. Recently, the Starlink uh, lost many satellites. And uh, right now, I can see our... Uh, colleague Sam Daniel standing in sunlight, maybe we should give him some opportunity to yes, talk please. because before he, he gets angry at us. Over to you, Sam. Sam joins us live from Sri Harikota this morning. 
Sam, give us a sense of the atmosphere on Ground Zero. Thank you, Parameshwar and Pallav. Well, we come to you from Ground Zero in that sense, from outside the Sri Harikota Satish Dhawan Space Center. The launch pad is just a few kilometers away from here, from where at 11.50, if everything goes well, the liftoff would happen. And a few kilometers away from us on the other side, of course, the signal is very bad. We're not able to show what's happening there. We have a public gallery where hundreds of school children are beginning to gather to watch the liftoff live. And it's a six, it's a 400 crore project which will take 120 days to accomplish its mission to reach the particular spot it's uh, designed to uh, to be placed. And uh, coming immediately after the successful soft landing of Chandrayaan 3 on the surface of the moon, there is quite an excitement among the scientific community, among ordinary people, among young children, students in schools and colleges to watch this live, to also to study this, to follow this particular mission with great excitement. And they hope this will continue to trigger or kindle that kind of a scientific temper among children, among students in colleges and research scholars to pursue space science or study of space science. Some are also critical saying that 400 crore could be better utilized to attend to build hospitals or to provide concrete change for people at a time when the country is facing uh, it could be healthcare issue or it could be poverty and things like that but it's a call the government is taking and the government hopes that this will again put India on a higher pedestal after having achieved joined the big club of a select few countries who have successfully achieved the soft landing on the moon. Parameshwaran Palav. As always, Sam, thank you so much for joining us with that live update from Sri Harikota. Let's bring in Dr. Samir. You know, Dr. Samir, back in December 2021, NASA's Parker Solar Probe actually touched the corona of the sun where the temperatures of the order of millions of degrees. It did not melt. In space, it could be thousands of degrees hot, but you won't really feel the heat is what experts say. So is it safe to say the Aditya L1 instruments won't melt in the heat of the sun? Well, I, I'd first like to clarify that uh, this common misconception that uh, Aditya L1 is going to the sun. In fact, it is not. And we are only sending it about four times the distance of the moon, which is not uh, too much compared to the distance of the sun. It's in fact only 1% of that distance. So uh, the changes would be 1% or even less in space because space is mostly empty. We always think of heat as something which is there around like in our air, etc. But uh, there is no air around it. So whatever heat the craft will get will be directly from the sun. And of course, yeah, uh, the, we'll have, we have special materials which have uh, been uh, used to coat the various parts which are sensitive. And more than the heat, I think, which will not be too much there and cannot definitely not thousands of degrees, maybe about 200 degrees or so, which is easily manageable with materials we have. Uh, so we are not going too far and we have it shielded from the heat. There's also the factor of uh, cosmic rays, which are very energetic charged particles which travel very fast. And if they hit anything, they can uh, go through those materials sometimes and they can affect the digital uh, parts of the craft. So a lot of technology, a lot of development has been happening over the last 10 years to prevent this from happening. And uh, as was just being said that, okay, can we, uh, you know, uh, spend the money elsewhere in, in various uh, immediate things? Well, see, these kinds of technology development have a far reaching effect. Now, uh, if, if we are to become a space going race and if, you know, or, or if we have to uh, develop uh, instruments or de develop some protection from uh, electromagnetic uh, rays, etc., high energy rays, etc., for the future. We have to do the research now and that's being done and it has its own offshoots in uh, which will be useful for um, mankind as a whole. So uh, this kind of mission is uh, very useful and as I said it is safe from the sun and the harmful things which will come from it. In fact it is going to be our weather station in space so it will make us aware of what is coming from the sun. Uh, I will not agree that the sun is angry on us but it does get a lot uh, very violent in a 11 year cycle. I think we can talk about it in detail as, as the program goes on. But we are, it's, it's in fact a weather station which is weather proof. I believe Palav sir also has a question for you. I don't have a question. I just want to answer this bit where people constantly talk about India spending money on space Please. technology. Uh, 400 crores, the cost of Aditya L1 mission is less than the cost of making a, a simple flyover in uh, 
in Bangalore or, or uh, Delhi or Chennai. So it's not a lot of money. India is a large country. But we also need to understand we have over 50 satellites in space from India, uh, which cost about 50,000 crores. And one of the objectives of Aditya L1 is to understand solar storms, forecast solar storms, the part which I call when the sun gets angry, uh, the sun gets whatever you may say, the solar storms come, so you have to power down the satellites, save them from being fried like the Starlink satellites got fried and the money would be well spent. It is like an insurance policy for the Indian satellite system. While it is an insurance policy, it is also doing some very good science through the science, seven scientific instruments. So it is a two in one mission uh, which does science and also helps protect uh, not just Indian but also uh, global satellites. So I, I, I kind of uh, quite disagree with that argument that money could be better spent on uh, developmental activities. Uh, space technology has given enough and more and it touches our lives every day. Weather forecasting, cyclone forecasting, every day when you go to an ATM machine to bring out cash, you don't realize that a satellite is touching your lives. So uh, space technology has given more than enough returns. And more than that, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi specially knows how to use sophisticated space technology for governance. And he has been doing that repeatedly since the time as Chief Minister and now as Prime Minister. And he is now asked for a hackathon to make sure that more and more space technology uh, comes into our daily lives. So this argument that, uh, uh, that we are spending money on space and taking away money from other aspects of development is a false narrative which needs to be uh, de uh, debunked with the force it requires because that's absolutely incorrect. Right. As Palaf sir has highlighted, solar expedition is crucial and touches every aspect of our lives, even though we may not realize it in a tangible element. Palaf sir, is it fair to say the Aditya L1 is a sort of early warning system against any tsunami of radiation from the sun? <laughs> that, that is what Dr. Samir was explaining, that when copious amounts of uh, radiation come our way and occasionally the sun sends out storms because of the uh, sunspots, etc., which erupt on it. And uh, you rightly said, sometimes it is like a tsunami because it goes it's so large that it engulfs all of Earth and passes through. And that is a very uh, tricky phase for not just satellite systems, which are electronic, but power systems on Earth, communication systems. And we need to be prepared for that. And, and, and this is essentially a forewarning system. The world has other systems as well. Uh, NASA and Euro uh, European Space Agency have systems which are in place, but India needs to have its own system in place and that is what uh, Indian scientists are giving to India. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Samir, for joining us on the broadcast and thank you as always, Pallav, sir. After a successful landing on the moon, ISRO is ready to launch its Aditya L1 mission at 11.50 a.m. today. Catch the non-stop coverage on the NDTV network.